Next on the news. Come June, two Catholic schools will close their doors after serving their communities for generations. I cried, I cried, it's, it's, it's just very sad. Plus, getting ready to say goodbye to the diocese's eighth grader as a special mass for the class of 2024. And did you miss the Eucharistic revival? Here's your chance to relive the biggest event since the Pope came to Queens. I'm Christine Persichetti. Currents News starts right now. Two Catholic schools in Brooklyn are closing their doors at the end of the school year. Together, Salve Regina in East New York and St. Catherine of Genoa, St. Teresa Lazoo in Flatbush have served their communities for more than 300 years. Current News' Katie Vasquez has the story. We find that you ready for school. The morning walk to school okay. for Charnette Hilton and her daughter Mia you. has become bittersweet. Come with you. <laughs> I love you. Because these Have steps day, okay. will soon come to an end. Bye. Mia School, Salve Regina Catholic Academy in East New York, has announced they are closing their doors. It's a tough Bye. reality for the seventh grader and her mom, who just transferred here from a charter school last year. It can be challenging um, finding a new environment where you feel safe, where you feel loved. I will really miss the school. Glory be to the Father. The Diocese of Brooklyn says Salve Regina and another school, St. Catherine of Genoa, St. Therese of Lazoo, and Flatbush are shutting their doors due to declining enrollment and unsustainable operating costs. Right now, Salve Regina has 193 students enrolled, and if they had kept their doors open, they would have had 143 students in September. St. Catherine of Genoa, St. Therese of Lazoo would have seen a similar drop. They currently had 151 kids in classrooms rooms, that number would have dropped to 122 kids. It's going to be hard to walk around these hallways knowing that it's going to be empty. The board of trustees at each school made the ultimate decision to close. Salve Regina Board of Directors Chairperson George de Jesus said there were three options to stay open increase enrollment, raise money, or increase their tuition by $1,500. Just not a realistic number that, that, that we can ask our parents to, to sacrifice. Unfortunately, Salve Regina is the last Catholic school standing in East New York. Uh, there is now going to be a desert of Catholic education and, and evangelization to young people. The superintendent's office is committed to assisting all families with finding a seat in another Catholic academy come September. My faith is very important to me, and that's the reason that I put them in a Catholic school, because it's important for me that they know of God. It's going to be a real sacrifice now. It's very heartbreaking that, you know, we won't have them anymore. In East New York, Katie Vasquez, Currents News. Activities at both schools will continue until the end of the school year. The buildings will officially close August 31st. We'll keep all those students in our prayers. Turning now to some happy prayers for Catholic students. Kids across Brooklyn and Queens flocked to the Co-Cathedral of St. Joseph Friday for a special mass for this year's graduating class. Welcome to the class of 2024. Brooklyn Bishop Robert Brennan led the celebration for around 1,500 eighth graders. They hail from almost all the Catholic academies, which was a first for the Diocese of Brooklyn. Bishop Brennan says the purpose for this first was to give them this message ahead of their upcoming graduations. The reason I invited you, the reason we invited you, is because we want you to know how proud we are, how much we believe in you, and how much we love you today and always. Amen. To hear Bishop Brennan's full message, just go to currentsny.tv. You can see more of Bishop Brennan if you tune into Net TV this weekend. The Shepherd of the Diocese of Brooklyn led thousands of people in prayer at a Eucharistic revival event in late April. And if you weren't in that crowd, you can see highlights of the celebration by watching Net TV this weekend. Included in the more than hour long broadcast is rosary prayers, testimony talks, and Bishop Brennan's homily. Just tune into Net TV this Saturday, May 4th at 7.30 p.m. and this Sunday, May 5th at 4 p.m.
And stay tuned this weekend for our full coverage of the Diocese of Brooklyn's Eucharistic Revival. A Currents News special covering how the event came to be will air. That'll all be right here on Net TV. A nonprofit organization is awarding creatives who affirm the highest values of the human spirit. The Christophers, founded by Mary Knoll priest Father James Keller, is rooted in service to God and humanity. The awards were created in 1949, and since then, the people behind more than 1,500 films, books, and TV programs have been recognized. The 75th annual Christopher Awards recently announced their winners, and Brooklyn author Tori Maldonado was was one of them. It's actually Tori's second time winning this prestigious award. His most recent award winning book is called Hands. Tori joins us now to tell us all about it. Hi, Tori, and congratulations. Thanks for the congratulations. It's great to be here. Uh, as you know, the Christopher Awards celebrate people whose work reflects their motto. It's better to light one candle than to curse the darkness. What does winning this award for a second time mean to you? The award means so much to me because the idea of lighting a candle instead of cursing the darkness is something that my mom had encouraged me to do all my life. Um, she passed away about two years ago and she was the biggest protector of my flame to help make the world a brighter place. And what she did was she rallied a community around me and it took a village to raise this child over here and this author over here. And the village, they all were um, protectors and fuelers of my flame so that I could uh, grow up and, and be here today to teach and to write in a way that adds more light. I love that. And in your book, Hands, which is geared toward middle schoolers, the protagonist has a stepfather who goes to jail for beating his mom. I want to read from the book. You write, that night, as Ma iced her puffy eye, I made a promise through my salty tears, deep in my heart, on my life, on my mom's, on my sister's, he won't ever hit Ma again. Never. Watch. So he wants to learn to fight and use his hands for violence. So what's the message for readers here? Now, the message is a timeless message. Um, since the beginning of time through now, um, young people, uh, people of all ages, we get messages about how we're supposed to use our hands. And this book is a book about a young 12-year-old boy in Brooklyn. It's largely autobiographical, who he's um, trying to decide, does he protect his hands so that he could grow up and become um, one of the artists that his community believes he can become? Or does he use his hands to protect his mom and his siblings? So this really is the, um, the Star Wars question of will he use his hands to um, shift himself into the light side of the force or will he use his hands and um, end up uh, following the path? of Darth Vader. And those references are also inside the book. There are a lot of comic references, Star Wars references, boxing references. All right, big decisions for little kids. All right, really quickly, I know your mother was Catholic. She brought you up going to church. How does that upbringing influence your writing? Uh, my mom, you know, there's, there's a saying, um, there's a, an amazing African-American uh, political um, figure. His name is Adam Clayton Powell. And he used to always say something. Another other celebrity said it too, keep the faith, baby. And my mom, she believed that if I had the faith of a mustard seed, I'd be able to move mountains. And, you know, I come from a family where I'm the only person who graduated high school and graduated college. And it was because of that faith that I was able to move mountains and also do um, what a lot of people said would be impossible, to publish award-winning books that young people around the world feel are fun roller coaster rides. All right, got to get the book. Tori Maldonado, author of Hands, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, and if you want to read Hands, you can buy the book online. Go to Tori's website, torimaldonado.com. That is this Cards News Update. I'm Christine Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.